सो लेट स्टार्ट विथ क्वेश्चन नंबर टू राइट एट फॉर एग्जाम इन द थियोरी बुक वेर आई टोल्ड यू ऑल टू राइट क्वेश्चन नंबर टू यू हैव टू रीड क्वेश्चन नंबर टू इट माइट कम फॉर अ थियोरी क्वेश्चन वट द क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट मिस्टर अभिषेक अ सीनियर सिटीजन प्लेज हिज रेसिडेंशियल हाउस विथ अ बैंक अंडर अ नोटिफाइड रिवर्स मॉडगेज स्कीम ही वॉज गेटिंग लोन फ्रॉम बैंक इन मंथली इंस्टॉलमेंट मिस्टर अभिषेक डिड नॉट रिपीट द लोन ऑन मेचोरिटी एंड हैंड्स गिव पोजिशन ऑफ द हाउस टू द बैंक टू डिस्चार्ज हिज लोन How will you treat of long term capital gain, but on such reverse mortgage gate scheme? Let's read what the practice manual has given the answer for this. Then I'll tell you what is the what is this reverse mortgage gate transaction. Firstly, remember section forty seven. Don't remember the sub clause. The sub clause are not important. Let me zoom in little bit. How can I zoom it? Uh, the sub clause are quite not important. Provided that any transfer of capital asset in a transaction of a reverse mortgage under a scheme made and notified by the central government shall not be considered as a transaction for the purpose of capital gain. This is a very important thing. Write this section in the theory book and this much part so that you read it once because there are two three sums similarly in the practice manual that you don't need to read again. If you write it once in your book, the answer is memorized or registered in your brain. and you have it is very handy before going to exam at least don't read one hour before the exam stop studying before one hour in the exam before the exam so before that time in the early morning before going to exam read only the theory whatever theory i am telling you to write in your theory book please write in the theory book now i hope you have made a separate book for your practical sums okay i hope you have done what i am whatever instruction i am giving you because if you make both the books same the theory book and the practice man uh, press up practicing sums in the one book then you will find it oh my god i am studying capital gain from so much time i am not covering it i am not able to cover the capital gain because in the capital gain chapter if you will see there are around 40 sums wait let me see if you solve this all 40 sums in the exam before exam going in exam this much pages then you will find oh god i have i am gaining this utility i am not be able to study the remaining part such as pgpp and salary so better for the capital gain how much ever small and concise you can small you can make your theory book is very important so that you have to rely on your theory book because whatever might come in the exam you will be able to solve so section 47 is over now let's read ahead this is very important section the statement is uh, making you all understand is self explanatory there is no need to explain whatever is explanatory i'll explain you accordingly the pledging of residential house with bank by mr abhishek will not be regarded as a transfer therefore no capital gain will be charged on such and this is the repetition of the statement that they have made it above for the section important section section 1047 provide that the amount received by the senior citizen as a loan either in lump sum or in installment in a transaction of reverse mortgage will be exempt from income tax therefore the monthly installment amount received by mr abhishek would not be taxable however capital gain tax liable will be attracted at a stage of alienation of mortgage property by the bank for the purpose of recovering the loan this part is quite irrelevant trust me it is quite irrelevant people in the uh, the examiner might expect it but if you elaborate on this point and in this point till over here these two points are very important after that you elaborate on your own there is no need for this simply write however simply write therefore no capital gain will be charged on mr abhishek and conclude the answer no need to write all this because this is quite extra the taxation is also a law you need to know what you have to write and what you have to not write so simply don't write it if you if you are quite capable if you remember entire act the income tax act 1962 and all the particular sections and all the statements then it is very good please remember it i personally didn't did it because i during my exams i was knowing such questions will not come because i was following my previous pattern that is the eight marks capital gain some will come and like not like the exam of may 16 If there was no exam before May 16th. That there was no capital gain sum. Capital gain sum was the very important sum that used to come. People used to depend on direct tax for capital gain, house property, and salary. They used to do this much only, and they used to go. The first, very first sum of computation of total income, very few people used to do. But the few exam uh, computation of the total 
total income was quite easy i saw the sum it was quite easy let's go on with the third question the third question is about section 50c i am writing in advance only the first three points are of section 53 i want you all to find out the amount of fair value of consideration don't see on the next page uh, write the 50 section how i told you over here over here in this sum for writing the notes first make the box of the capital gain wait let me zoom out a little bit okay so write this capital gain computation and after write the format and in that put the FUOC FUOC calculation will be done in the notes what is the question saying uh, Mr. Anshu transfer land and building land and building section 50c for land and building only wait uh, only for land and building was 50c is the additional condition that I gave you all for of the valuation assigned by the valuation officer on reference by the assessing officer so this is it you have uh, the amount is FEOC is 25 lakh cents net consideration and stamp duty valuation whichever will be higher will be taken as FEOC that is 25 lakhs and stamp duty valuation authority evaluate value and the valuation officer on reference of the assigning assigning officer whichever will be lower will be taken as FEOC so therefore 25 lakhs comes to be FEOC the land was acquired by Mr. by Anshu Miss Miss Anshu on 141981 fair market value of the land as on 141981 was 1 lakh 10 quite important because this is simply if you want you can write over your cost of acquisition coa anshu constructed a residential building on the land at a cost sorry, at a cost of rupees at a cost of rupees 3 lakh 20,000 constructed completed on 1 12 2002 during the financial year 2002 and 2003 wait brought forward short term capital gain losses incurred on sales of shares during 2000 uh, during 2010 and 11 for rupees 1 lakh 50 thousand if you remember my set off and carry forward capital gain long term capital gain can be set off uh, short term capital loss can be set off from the long term capital gain amount or any capital gain amount but only long term uh, sorry long term capital loss will be set off against long term capital gain only i hope you have seen the chart right now only giving you time to see the chart please see the chart pause the video and see i hope you have seen it so let's move ahead Anshu seeks your advice regarding the amount to be invested in nhai bonds nhai bonds comes in section 54 ec so as to exempt from the capital gain tax under the income tax act 1961 cost of inflations are given so let's move ahead i'll show you over here only how to i'm not practically solving the sums over there i'm just i'm i'll just tell you how to present and what to write in the notes and how to write so the main box first of all you have to write the name of the ssc age of the SSE, period of holding all the period of holding is long term capital gain since constructed in 1-12-2012 and as it was cost of, acquire, cost of acquisition was of 1-4-1981 so it is quite long term capital asset first you will write computation of capital gain of mass Anshu for the assessment here this particulars you will write FVOC you precisely write transfer expenses also don't miss out transfer expenses because if you get the habit of solving in this manner you will forget subtracting transfer expenses so it is better to write two steps the examiner will also find okay he is a genuine student he knows the total format of the capital gain then you will get the net consideration rupees 2 lakh 25 lakhs less index cost of acquisition index cost of acquisition for this 141981 is I will show you on the Kelsey how to solve it was for 1 lakh 10,000 into 1081 you always remember if the question does not gives you about 1981 and 82 it is always 100 divided by 100 so you get this amount 11 lakh 89,100 index cost of building the building was constructed for rupees 3 lakh 20,000 so write 3 lakh 3 lakh 20,000 into 10 
81 what is index cost of inflation for 2003 and 2008 it is 447 divided by 447 you get 7,73,870 in this manner take the amount in the outer column there is no index cost of improvement still write index cost of improvement and put a dash and write long term capital gain as this now broad broad forward loss of 150000 will be subtracted in this manner less broad forward short term capital loss set off rupees 150000 then taxable um, simply write gross uh, no 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 what you have to write i'll show you wait right simply write long term capital gain in the in this you write gross long term capital gain ltc long term gross long term capital gain and in after subtracting in this write long term capital long term capital gain don't write long term capital gain and directly show over here so this amount this amount will be totally allowed to be invested in nhai bond what does nhai bond has a what condition does nhai bond has the conditions are it should be any ssc first of all ssc should be all any ssc then sell off any capital asset then the asset should be long term capital gain or um, wait i am not recalling that long term wait i the asset should be charted on board The asset should be long-term capital assets. Yeah, I was right. Long-term capital assets. The investment should be made in NHAI bonds and RECL bonds. The amount invested should be this long-term capital, long-term capital gain, long-term capital gain maximum fifty lakhs, or amount invested, whichever is lower. Okay. So here three lakh eighty seven thousand thirty rupees can be invested because maximum of fifty lakhs. But the condition is within the period of six month from such transfer. Please make a note in the similar manner. First of all, write section fifty, then index cost of acquisition calculation down, and then. And then lastly, you write about section 54 EC. The all the part that I have shown you all, I have given you all the format that I have given you. See that it will help you. And write in the same manner. Write in a and the most important part, the manner I have uh, written. I have manner. I have written in this manner. You don't write in this manner. You write in the para manner. Just keep on writing the. SEC should be all individual HUF company partnership firm. The asset should be hold for a period of long term capital asset uh, for a term of long term capital asset that is more than three years or thirty six months. Then the sale of sale or transfer should be of any capital asset. The investment should be done only in R E H I or N H A I bond. The amount invested should be of long term capital gain or long term capital gain or amount invested or maximum of 50 lakhs whichever is lower will be taken as exemption under section 54 ec exemption or deduction under section 54 ec but such exemption or deduction will be allowed if the amount is invested within the period of six months if i am fast rewind it rewind the video and if you want you can write it down also and the and the locking period is of three years if the locking period it is not if 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 it is not followed then there are violations the, since the violations are not asked in the questions you don't need to write it there are violations simply end the statement there are violations that's it the entire sum is over and there is a no chance the examiner will cut your eight marks you'll get entire eight marks so your question number three is done you have to solve this question number three right question number three the first three questions you have to do now as on we move ahead there are there will be questions that i'll skip so don't worry you assume it i have skipped it no need to solve an exam so the next video will be on other sums